This week on Brew Blood, Sweetwater Brewing Company has arrived in Texas, and we take on the hash brown India style brown ale. And we have good news after an interview with Michael Petticolis last week. This is Brew Bloods. Drink beer. Think beer. You're listening to Brew Bloods. Beer, if drunk in moderation, softens the temper, cheers the spirit, and promotes health. That from one time, American forefather, Thomas Q. Jefferson. Thomas Elizabeth Jefferson. Thomas Elizabeth Hitler Jefferson. <laughs> that was his full name. He he was the original Hitler. <laughs> the, original. the other Hitler uh, took his name from this guy. Right. It was his, it, yes, Adolf's was entirely a tribute to the original <laughs> Hitler. Right. Thomas Q.E. Hitler <laughs> Jefferson. Which shouldn't have as bad of a connotation back in that day Which, as, it, as it ended up having later. Surprisingly part of the buried history of the United States. Yes. Follow the money and then you'll know why. That's, that's deep in the tombs. We suppressed the H from Thomas Q.E. <laughs> H's Jefferson's name. That'll be the next uh, mystery that uh, Thomas Langdon solves. <laughs> Who's Thomas Langdon? Whatever those books were back in the day that everybody was obsessed with. I can't remember now. Oh, the one that stars Tom Hanks, right? In the book? That's it, yeah. It's Tom Hanks as as Robert... Ro- Clark, yeah, it's Clark Robert Pants. Langdon. Yeah. yeah. The, entirely the some of the worst written books I've ever read. <laughs> but that'll be the next one The Da Vinci Code. Da Vinci Code, yeah, that's that, what it was, yeah. That'll I, be the next Da Vinci Code book. I read that book after all the hype, and I was like, this guy can barely write one sentence. It was, it was among yeah. the worst trash I've ever read. I, I would imagine, as someone who hasn't looked at it, that Fifty Shades of Grey was even worse and was Probably even a bigger hit, but or at least as big a hit. Now, I will say from a, a story architecture point of view, very interesting. Yeah. It's just the way he writes is just very, very first grade level. Very the movies basic. were all right, but the, the books was not too good. I agree. The books was not. The books were not too good. Welcome to episode 66 That's why I don't write books. Six of Brew Bloods. Also, happy National Trail Mix Day to everybody. That was National Dog Day. No, no. I'm saying the day that this is coming out is National oh, okay. Trail Mix Day. Stop. But today is Dog Day. Stop pulling back the curtain on the day that we record. <laughs> it's National Stop Trail Mix Day. Stop pulling the bath day. curtain back? Yes, the bath curtain back. Do you enjoy some trail mix? Uh-uh. How often do you hit the trails with a bag of mix? I don't hit the trail very often. I'll hit the... I'll eat the mix and not hit the trail yeah I, I i'll like eat a, the mix that's made for the trail but not go on the trail i mean who wants to waste your time on a trail when you can just be powered up around just you know pa- you sitting around the mix yeah sit around you know just spanking it on a lazy boy you need power for that so you did down some trail mix well, down some of the peanuts and m&ms we've well established that you try your best not to have to leave that chair absolutely i so, try to leave a permanent ass print in this thing i'm sure you get it delivered through amazon now you get your trail mix <laughs> delivered you, you take your chair down the stairs it's like one of those old lady handicap chairs where it has to go really slow, and the guy's knocking on the door, like, wait just a minute, coming down the stairs. I'll be there in a second. Meanwhile, my dogs are howling nonstop exactly. as they do, the canine doorbells that they are. That's wonder- your version of a trail, is taking your chair around the house. <laughs> my, it's pretty much just a tiny Appalachian trail up and down the stairs. <laughs> right, myself, exactly. I can barely move. I'm so wallied out over here. <laughs> I wonder how far away we've gotten from the original trail mix, which was established by Lewis and Clark back in the day. Do you think theirs is probably made from beaver pelts and raccoon tails? I was going to say, it's peanuts, made from anything they found on the trail. Rocks, some weeds, some nice pine cones. Probably frog anus or something, who knows. I'm pretty sure Anything the, they could put together. <laughs> just a bag of frog anus, rocks, and pine cones. <laughs> it's, that's, that's Somehow some, that doesn't sell as well now. Well, if it was small batch artisanal and free range, <laughs> we might be able to get it at Whole Foods. If it was but, all organic anus, then maybe it would <laughs> <laughs> Free range organic anus. Right. I feel like we've gotten a little crafted. I feel like we've gotten away from the spirit of trail mix in this country. Oh, trail mix is tricked up. If you want to make America great again, let's get back to the original frog anus. Frog <laughs> right. anus. I mean, leave out your M and M's. Yeah, yeah well, M and M's are not meant to. Be. That's not how America was made great by Lewis and Clark and Thomas Q E uh, H Jefferson Hitler. Uh, no, I, it was made great by ox tongue. Frog anus, rocks and pine cones, and a nice burlap sack. I have a hot trail mix opinion in that I don't think chocolate really should be involved. Man, I'm right there with you. I think chocolate is uh, an abortion. It's a trail mix abortion. It really should not be there. It taints it. Is it a is it a tasty confection? Yes, it is. Sure, but that is not that's not what powers me to blaze trails across America. It's not there for the trail. At most, in your modern trail mix, I can only be powered by a nice mix of nuts. I think it should be mostly nuts. Maybe some berries. It's not my favorite thing, but if you threw raisins in, I understand. Maybe. That can fit in a trail mix. I feel like trail mix, you should only be able to have something that that which you could actually find on a trail. 
Sure. So you can find some nice mixed nuts. You can find some alfalfa sprouts. Sure. But you can't find chocolate in a chocolatey shell. Yeah, you can't find an M&M on the trail. I mean, you might be able to, but who knows how old it is. Yeah. Yeah, I I wouldn't recommend eating a trail M&M. It's just because some fat kid busted open his bag while he fell down and skinned his knee, and his M&M spilt everywhere six months ago. That's not... I'm talking naturally Just because it's on a trail doesn't mean it's natural to the trail. Exactly. Your trail mix should only consist of that which you can actually find growing on a trail, alongside a trail. There you go. I agree. Yeah, exactly. Uh, And so, therefore, um, I think I know the, the, the path to which we can actually make America great again. Ignore your Hillary Clintons and your Trumps. Resto- make trail mix great again, and we will finally find success in this country. We'll eliminate all debt. We'll eliminate all, uh, you know, it'll be cheaper to make carbon emissions. You don't have to pay. You don't have to pay the M M&M and M Corporation. That's true. You don't have to pay. The, follow the money again. Why do you think? Why do you think there's M and M's in our trail mix? It's because just follow that money. Follow right, it all exactly. the way up the the chocolate trail that goes into the snack game. That's a whole CD that, underbelly. That we can't of get society. into the snack game here. Yeah, we only get into that on our other show, the Break Room. Right. But we're not here to talk about trail mix. Well, we don't mix. want to taint this show with that. No, no. Let's not talk about trail mix. Let's talk about some news. Now, by the time you're hearing this, there may be another emergency podcast coming out before this, <laughs> which will refer forward to this story. I know that's confusing. It's called time travel. Look it's it really up. weird. Just talk to Marty McFly. For everyone that is listening, what you're listening to now, it's not live. It's the, it's It was then, but it's not it now. It was then. What we just said was then, and now is different than then. And now is not now to you, it's now to us. And we could say that the entire show. But that, it was then That to this is you. now and that was then. We could, and we're going to continue to say that. Right. But, since we can't really talk about then and now... I think you guys need to work out the whole then now thing on your own. Just, but just to let you know, it's not a, you're not listening to us live. You can't not. respond to us, we can't hear you. Even if we had an I mean, open you phone can re- line. I mean, you can respond to us, but we can't hear you unless you actually called in to 469-573-BEER. But we wouldn't hear you now as we're talking. But we might hear you then, being we're, next week. We'd hear you then. Exactly. But anyways, let's go into the future and into the past. And let's talk about our, our last episode with Michael Petacolis. We had a great interview. Everybody's talking tremendous about it. Interview. All the interwebs, they're saying it's tremendous. The most luxurious interview with Michael Petacolis he's ever had. Everyone's saying that. Anyone you ask. And if you haven't listened to it, he had a lawsuit against the state of Texas... Uh, along with Revolver and Live Oak and the Society for Justice, not the Injustice Society, as I always <laughs> want to call it. And he was trying to sue the state of Texas for the distribution rights in Texas where you were not allowed, according to a 2013 law, you were not allowed to be compensated for your distribution rights as you were prior to 2013. Right. And he filed a lawsuit against the state of Texas in last year, I think, or 2014. And it came out uh, a few days ago that he won the lawsuit. Yes, they, they did win it, um, which was... Really nice to hear. I mean, it sounded in the interview like they thought it was going to be positive, yeah. but you never know. Um, As he said, you can sometimes you expect to win, and it totally goes against you. And I fully expect the state to, uh, you know, counter and the, the appeal did, it. And yeah, the judge did say in her motion that it an appeal would be allowed in this case. Sure, and they will. I'm sure they'll appeal it. Um, yeah. I don't know where that will go, but I'm sure they'll appeal it. Well, Matt Miller, senior attorney and the head of the Austin office for the Institute for Justice and Justice Society, said that our hope and the hope of our clients is that this will increase access to craft beer across the state. But I guess that does mean in the meantime they can sell distribution rights, correct? Uh, yeah, and that's one of the questions I have and might have had, depending on when you hear this. For Michael Petacolis, we had talked about trying to do a follow-up interview, a phoner with uh, Mr. Petacolis. As of now, we don't know if that worked out, but right. you, by the time you hear this, it might have worked out. Right. You, we, we don't know now, but you might know then. We just don't know now. It would but, seem to make sense if there's a judge's decision against it that they could do it. I, would I mean, so. I'm no legal mind, but just logically w- speaking, it seems like that would be the case. And I wonder, like, the question I have or had and might have in the future is, how long does it take for this to go into effect? Is it immediate? They, they could, like, turn around tomorrow and uh, Benny Keith could say, uh, here's $500 million, uh, Petacolis. I'm, ass- I'm assuming they could. I'm assuming. Yeah. I'm assuming. I read the – it's all kinds of legalese. Now, if the and appeal goes through, I don't know what that means for the deals that remain in the meantime. Again, good point. I'm not a legal expert. Good point. So, I don't know. We'll see. We haven't heard anything about an appeal yet from the state as of this point in time. But by the time you hear this, you might have heard about an appeal by then. And we know... By uh, now. We know uh, Michael's a busy guy, and he's given us a lot of yeah, time already. He's so a busy billy. If, and we never, if we don't hear from him, it's totally understandable. Yeah. But hopefully hopefully we can get a follow-up uh, hopefully at we some can. point and bring that to or you. Hopefully we will have by the time you hear this. Yeah, or uh, maybe this is all a moot point and you've already <laughs> We heard may it. have issued an emergency podcast, right. but we don't know that, but you do by the time you're hearing this. Future us will know that. Current <laughs> us, 
we don't know that. And just stay excellent to each other. Exactly. So congratulations to Pedicolas, to Live Oak, to Revolver, and the Injustice Society, Society for Injustice, uh, Injustice Society. They do seem like they should be kind of mask vigilantes. <laughs> they do. Working in some uh, giant tower or some, <laughs> undersea, under, some undersea location that's secret. Nefarious plans. Yes. All for the good of beer. <laughs> right, exactly. Fighting crime in the secret lab Fighting somewhere. crime in a future time. Yes. All right, well, coming up after this, we're go- a new brewery, not new to us in Texas, has, new hit, to us. has hit the state. We're going to talk about them. That's Sweetwater Brewery. Hit us right in the face. One of the oldest beer styles, Berliner Weisse, is a top-fermented, bottle-conditioned wheat beer made with traditional warm fermenting yeast and lactobacillus bacteria. Its tart, sour, and acidic flavor is the perfect beer for a hot summer day, though it's not uncommon for people to add raspberry or woodruff syrup to the glass to cut the intense sourness, which also changes the appearance of the beer. It's common for Berliners to order a Berliner Weisse simply as a red or green, depending on which syrup they prefer. With an ABV of 2 to 5%, you can knock back a few without getting drunk. Like most beers, Berliner Weisse has a specific glass type you should drink it from. A chalice, which is wide and bulbous because it foams like champagne. It can be stored for up to 5 years and should be served at 46 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 8 to 10 degrees Celsius. It's unclear how Berliner Weisse got started. Documents from 1642 allegedly show the first evidence of Weisse beer in Berlin, but there is evidence that it could date back to the High Middle Ages. By the 19th century, the beer style had become one of the most popular beers in Berlin, with around 700 breweries making it. Slowly, the popularity started to decline, and now only one brewery still makes it. Schultheis. You might find Berliner Weisse-style beers in your local bottle shop, but like cognac, champagne, and Kolsch beer, it enjoys the legal protection of a controlled place name, which means that this style of beer can only truly be called a Berliner Weisse if it's brewed in Berlin. Similar to the Belgian Gerse, Berliner Weisse gets its intense sourness from Lactobacillus delbrucki, named after Nobel laureate biochemist Max Delbruck, who isolated the Lactobacillus bacterium while working in Berlin in the 1930s as the head of the Institute for Fermentation Tissue. The beer is usually made from roughly 25-30% to 30% pale malted wheat, with barley malt added for color. All Berliner Weisse beers come in a 0.33 liter bottle. You won't be able to find it on draft. In the early days, it was sold in earthenware crocks closed with string-fastened cork stoppers. These crocks were often buried in the sand for three months to condition. This summer, when you're done with your yard work, cool off with an effervescent, refreshingly sour Berliner Weisse. Sweetwater Brewing Company. It's not a brewery I have a lot of experience with. They just came to Texas this week. Actually, last week by the time you're hearing this. But this week, they finally arrived in Texas. They finally got distributed to Texas. I feel like this is one you've been looking forward to because the few times you have had it, I feel like you've really enjoyed it. I have. And it's one that you were hoping that we would get at some point. I got to confess, like I didn't. I haven't had a lot of their beers. I've had sure. rare access to them. And the first time I had them was when I went to Stone Mountain, Georgia, for one of my first bagpipe competitions. Uh, that was like that's uh, a competition. Com- it's it's an advanced it's competition. A, <laughs> okay, it's a it's a next level. Competition. It's a next level. It's a, it's a level you can't even you fathom. dish it out. You really dish out the competition. Yeah, the I'm, competition. I'm playing drums and and piping on three different bagpipes at the same time. <laughs> it's it's a one man bagpipe band. Well, you need some beer for that. You got to be loose. Yeah, but. Uh, I had never, I didn't know, I mean, I had never been to Georgia before. I didn't know what to expect. All I knew about Stone Mountain was what I'd heard on 30 Rock. What if it doesn't work? What if he doesn't come back? Oh, no. When I get up some miles and come out, and when it gets to coming out, I can't get to talking no. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was, that was, uh, it's all I knew about Stone Mountain. And uh, we went to Georgia for a competition, which we took number one. Hooray for us in Dallas. That was because you did all this. That was because it was a competition. That was, that was a competition, yeah. yeah. And uh, that's all I knew about Stone Mountain. And we went to, that was the first time I had the Mellow Mushroom Pizza, was in Georgia, which was before they came to Dallas as well. Right. And I had some sweet water beer. I didn't know what to expect. I wasn't really as much into craft beer back then. That was about five years ago, uh, as I am now. Sure. And I was really surprised about how much I liked this beer. And uh, it was 
a lot sweeter. Not, not a lot, by you know, by a few degrees. Um, and I think in this case, I think this is part of the expectation is that the river upon which they base their beer, it's called the Sweetwater River. Makes total sense. And it has a very different taste from a lot of other water that you can get beers. And it it's a nice, softer edge to a lot of their beers. The few I've had, I should say. Sure. So, again, I've only had a few of their beers in that the last five years. But, yeah, I was really pleasantly surprised by them. Now, my only exposure to it, and I got all excited when we found it because you were so excited about it, is when we went to New Orleans, they served it at one restaurant. We went to one nice restaurant during that trip. And we were holding hands, and we were skipping right. around looking for beer. We found one place that had a lot of taps, but it had a lot of stuff that we'd all, you know, you get everywhere. And, I, and um, we were on Bourbon Street, right? And we were like it was the on only, Bourbon Street, yeah. We were like the us and our wives were like the only people in the bar. Yeah, because nobody cares about beer there. They just care about getting uh, whatever those things are, hand grenades and yeah, uh, whatever those drinks are. Uh, I can't, I don't even remember. More but, hand grenades. Yeah, hand grenades and hand grenades. Jaeger but, bombs. <clears throat> but anyway... So we were in there. It was it was all right. It had a couple things. But then we went to that restaurant. And they had one Sweetwater beer on. And I remember having that and thinking, I, I can't remember which one it was, but I remember at the time thinking, this is actually, this is pretty good. And I pretty see good Marcus likes it. Um, and another just general comment I will say about Dallas. Uh, I know you hate Dallas. It's, it's like your least favorite place you've ever been. You hate it. Think it's terrible. But I will say on the beer front. Nah, far, first of all, stop. We're pretty, stop. We're pretty flush. We're okay, pretty we flush. are. We are. What I hate about Dallas is the political attitudes and the weather. Yeah, true. I hate the heat. And that's what I hate about Dallas. Although, in fairness, the heat's been nice lately. Yeah, but let's let's tap the brakes. La Nina, bitch. Yeah, true. Or El Nino. I know. I just just like to rag on you about Dallas. That's it. I just hate the weather and I hate the politics. Sure, fair enough. Politics. Well, we're not we're if not it too far off. That, oh yeah, and I hate the landscape. <laughs> I guess we're not too far off on that anyway. And I hate the traffic. Yeah, any big city though, man. Uh yeah, but it's been getting weird. F you um Toyota for moving your headquarters here. <laughs> but anyway, on the craft beer front, I want to say we're probably one of the prime locations because we get the best stuff from the east, the best stuff from the west. The all, best. The best from the central area these days. I mean, as soon as Bells gets down here, uh, between Bells, Ninkasi... Uh, Cigar City's coming. Yeah, Cigar City's going to be here uh, thanks to... Uh, yeah, it's Oscar Blues. Um, so we get all those big ones. I think, honestly, and this isn't me being a homer, maybe it is, but... I'm going to go ahead and be a homer, I guess. I think we have some of the better locally brewed uh, craft beers, too. Having had local beers in other towns, I think we have some of the, like, some of our locals I would take over some of the awesome national brands that have had other places or bigger craft beers I've had other places. So getting just yet another, uh, what is supposed to be highly rated uh, craft, kind of a smaller niche craft beer company in here in Sweetwater, is just more proof that we just keep getting and keep getting all these awesome breweries. So I hope that trend keeps going. From a, put it that way. Yes, we're in a sweet spot of the country for sure. And, and that's one of the, probably the, the top ten things, the top three things I enjoy about the city, it's that. Sure. We get uh, Five Guys Burgers and Fries, and we get In-N-Out Burger, and we get Shake Shack. We get all that stuff. Anything you want, everywhere they say this is the best East or West Coast, being in the middle, we get it all. So it's kind of nice. If we could just enjoy the finer, finer things like a casino... And a beer before 12 on Sundays. Sure. Uh, I, you know, I tolerate a yeah, little more. Yeah, if we didn't have the stupid laws, that's true. The yes. laws, uh, again, like the Pedicolas lawsuit, the stupid laws of the state, uh, I, I agree, we have problems with and it. if somebody would invent a weather machine and cool this mf or down, <laughs> it'd be great. That's true. Yes, I agree. So, that being said, uh, this I think some of the reviews we do, too, just being a beer podcast in Dallas... We have a lot of competition. We do. Like, there is a lot of competition. So much competition. And I think that that's kind of an, just an interesting element to us doing this kind of show that I don't know that people outside of Dallas really realize how much awesome beer we have access to uh, at this point. That's right. Suck it, every other city. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean... Be jealous. <laughs> so, to go through just some of the, some of the top-rated beers uh, that they have that have been rated the most times... One of the ones I definitely have had before is the uh, Sweetwater 420 Extra Pale Ale. That one, not rated as high, but it has been rated several times, uh, 1,200 times. And it only gets a 65 and a 58 in style. But then you go one rating down, or one uh, beer down to the Sweetwater IPA. And that has been reviewed almost as many times, uh, 1,185 times. And it has a 96 uh, overall and a 96 in style. The Happy Ending Imperial Stout. Has a 97 and a 64 in style, which I always find really weird that they rate an individual beer. I guess they know. I guess again they're saying it's just it's not it doesn't fit the style as well, but it's good. 
Um, and then some of their other fruit, like they have a fruit beer uh, that's rated pretty low. Then they have a spice herb vegetable beer that's rated pretty high. <laughs> it yeah. goes from a 38 to a 90. So they're willing to go all over the place. They seem to try a lot of different t- uh, styles, and um, it's it's varied. So I guess I say they're a highly rated brewery. I guess based on a f- couple of their signature uh, beers that are rated fairly high, 96, 97, some of their most reviewed beers. Uh, some of the other stuff though is a little bit, a little bit all over the board. So, and we're and here in Dallas. We're getting at least right now. We're only getting their most common beers. So we're getting right. the IPA. We're getting the 420, and then we're getting two. We're getting the, a session IPA, which is not listed in their top beers. Right. And then the one we're reviewing today, which is the Sweetwater Hash Brown, which is a hoppy brown ale. Right. So after this, we will talk about that very beer, the Sweetwater Brown Ale. <laughs> Sweetwater Brewing founders Freddie Bench and Kevin McNearney were roommates at the University of Colorado at Boulder. Here, they worked part-time cleaning kegs at a local brewery. After graduation in 1993, Bench moved to California to study at the American Brewers Guild, while McNearney went on to work in several breweries, including Rocky's Brewing Company, Avery Brewing Company, and Mammoth Brewing Company. The 1996 Summer Olympics brought Bench to Atlanta, where he saw an opportunity to bring a West Coast-style brewery to the Southeast. His old roommate McNerney joined him in Atlanta, raising initial funds to open the brewery's first location off I-20 on Fulton Industrial Boulevard. Bench came up with the name Sweetwater Brewing after a kayaking trip down the Sweetwater Creek, which is a tributary of the Chattahoochee River. Bench and McNerney's first Sweetwater Brew came in January 1997, when they created the Sweetwater ESP and Sweetwater Blue. In April 1997, Sweetwater's signature beer, the Sweetwater 420 Extra Pale Ale, was created and named for the date on which it was brewed. Sweetwater has had several accolades over the years. In 2002, they won Small Brewery of the Year at the Great American Beer Festival. In 2013, they were ranked 26th best brewery in the United States and 19th best among the top 50 best craft brewing companies in the U.S. With Sweetwater's rise in popularity has come a rise in production and distribution as well. In 2003, they had to move out of their original location and into a 25,000 square foot facility in Atlanta's Armor Circle Industrial Park. Their production has increased from 200,000 cases in 2004 to 700,000 cases a year in 2010. As of 2012, Sweetwater is capable of producing 500,000 barrels of beer per year. So the BJCP for American Brown Ale is that aroma-wise it should be very uh, somewhat hoppy appearance should be dark amber to dark brown color hot bitterness and flavor dominate the malty richness that is a characteristic of brown ales mouthfeel will be medium body with a dry resiny impression contributed by the high hop bitterness and the overall impression is that it is a bigger hoppier drier version of a brown ale typically including the citrus accented hop that is a characteristic of american varieties so the hash brown definitely should fit into that category based on the description here uh, which i find funny the first line of it is the is Oh me, oh my, what did we do? Like, maybe this was an accidental creation. Yeah. I, I have no idea, but uh, the overall description says, We fired up the skillet to 420 degrees, toss up a sizzling concoction of two-row wheat, pale chocolate, uh, cara brown, and midnight wheat, then added in a hefty dose of hop hash and other dank-ish-ish-ish fixins to scatter, smother, and cover this baby all the way. I like how they added, like, 14 inches there. Do you think they enjoy the pot references? No, this, this I know. Uh, no, 420 and hash. No, I don't, I don't think they have that at all. Resiny, dankish. Yes, resiny, citrusy hops spice up the rich chocolate and caramel notes. The malt brought to the mix makes this platter slide down the, the counter at 60 IBUs. Let's slide down the counter. I don't know what exactly that means. That's a weird mixed metaphor. So that's, like. that's weird, yeah. Then they describe some of the, uh, the grains and hops that it has. But uh, overall, it seems to kind of fit what the bjcp said uh so we should definitely be in that range um the ibu being 60 shouldn't shouldn't hit us too hard there the ab uh, abv is uh 6.2 percent so kind of a basically a session for uh, a seasoned veterans but so are you have you ever i have I get, we're not brewers and we're not very aspiring home brewers because we've only made like three batches i'd never heard of hop hash have you heard of this no i haven't heard of that and this is not the start of uh seinfeld stand-up What's the deal with hop hash? <laughs> no, apparently, so when they're making hop pellets, they're processing the, the hops themselves. So while they're making those, there's those big, uh, like, hammer things. And at the very end of when they pull the ho- the hops, and the pellets themselves out, there's leftover this, like, powder-like substance, which is, like, a really concentrated form of lupulin glands. And wow. so it's a more intense um, hop powder that's left over. And they collect that, and they actually sell that. Interesting. Uh, as its own ingredient and so that's what they're using here instead of apparently it can be used instead of dry hopping after the fact you can use a hop mash 
Oh, and, okay. And that's what it's often used for, to, to lend an even hoppier presence to the beer. Yeah, definitely. No, I've never heard of anyone using that. So I can't say that I've ever had a hoppy brown ale before. Uh, that, I can't either. That I can um, recall. It's possible, but I can't recall one. Oh, I did forget to give the ratings. Uh, ratings for this one. Beer Advocate, 87 out of 100. Uh, rate Beer, 94 overall. 99 in style, so they say it hits that on the nose. Untapped, 3.7, or excuse me, 3.67 out of 5. Uh, on uh, 22, 922, or excuse me, 22,922 unique reviews, if I could read. Uh, so it's been reviewed a decent amount, yeah. uh, for sure, on Untapped. And, you know, 3.67, and we always say anything over 3.5 is good. 94 uh, rate beer is pretty high, and Beer Advocate, who's usually uh, the tougher reviewers, I would say, and they give it an 87, so... Your first hoppy brown ale should be a good experience, Mark. So what are you expecting out of this beer? Um, I expect I expect subtle hops, and I expect it to be, uh, I don't know exactly what kind of citrus, but I definitely expect it to be citrusy. Um, and then I want a, a nice kick of dark chocolate with it, too, uh, with maybe a little caramel. So maybe it'll be like dark chocolate with a little sweet edge, and then uh, some nice citrus, some nice citrus on a different part of the tongue. I expect the... The uh, hop taste to kind of go to the back of the mouth like we've had several times and then have uh, the sweetness kind of up front. So that's what I'm hoping for, especially rated this high. I expect to get all those notes in it, you know? Uh, I, I can tell you I'm already disappointed because I was expecting this thing to take like hash, like hash browns, like a nice McDonald's hash brown. And it doesn't yeah. sound like I'm going to get that. I don't think you're going to get that, unfortunately. Which, you know, another thing. If we want to make America great again, let's improve the hash brown. We've gotten too greasy with our hash browns in this country. It's like a big greasy mess. We need to shape that up, make it salty, make it good, so it can pile it in my mouth again. I like the messy hash brown too. I don't like uh, the I don't uh, like the carved hash brown that like McDonald's all, hash brown that's all compact. Oh man, the carved hash brown is the best. You like nah, the, the stuff like the, that's all loosey goosey like in your the mouth. Palette. I like the palate of hash brown. Uh, yes, you're messed up, bro. I don't even know we would do the show anymore. Well, we definitely couldn't do a hash brown show. So let's talk about uh, the hash brown beer since we can we can't agree on. The perfection of hash browns. Yeah, we'll have to they, listen to that in a shorty. America will continue to be to fail again because we don't have good hash browns. I don't want to be country. greasy. I just like to be loose. That's all. Uh, this particular can. Now, I will say Sweetwater, their can, this this particular can for the hash brown, uh, India-style brown ale, as they call it, reminds me of a Ballast Point can, except more busy. Yeah, it's a lot more busy. <laughs> because it has like a, a trout you know, on the front of the can, which is very Ballast Point-esque. Uh, in some ways, and it's got some guys that's in the back rowing the boat. It's also Two Hearted Ale esque. Two Hearted Ale. That's I'm sorry, not Ballast Point. That's uh, well, I guess Ballast Point too. Uh, but yeah, it reminded me of both of those. Yeah. It's just their their can is. It kind of reminds me of like if the inside of Mellow Mushroom, the restaurant, uh, <laughs> just kind of uh, kind of a hippie esque vibe to it, and it's kind of all over the walls. If that makes sense, uh, it just kind of reminds me of the inside Mark, of a Mellow Mushroom restaurant. They're obsessed with 420, so that's not a shock. That's exactly. Right. It looks like it might enjoy a place at a Led Zeppelin or a Grateful Dead concert, perhaps. Something like that. A nice Maybe they just jam out the fish for about 12 yeah, hours. You might enjoy <laughs> drinking this these. with a tie-dyed t-shirt. <laughs> some a, kind of jam band. Maybe yes. some Dave Matthews. A 20-minute... For, for like 30 hours straight. A 20-minute uh, tenor saxophone solo, <laughs> followed by a 30-minute harmonica solo. Exactly, of course. And that's just the first song in the set. <laughs> it's an all-nighter, man. I mean, it's it's an okay can. It's uh, it's very. They, I, one thing I've noticed about their cans is they're all very, very different. Uh, their their unifying theme here is their lo- their Sweetwater logo itself, right? Uh, whereas others like Ballast Point tend to have their their label design in general is very unifying, right? But uh, I do enjoy their uh, slogan, which is "Don't float the mainstream." Which kind of ties in with the yeah, whole river yeah, aspect. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if you understand pun. I got it. Yeah, you, I got it. Do you get pun? <laughs> Did you. that help? Thank you. Okay, there we go. Appreciate that. Now I know, now I know that you know you know pun. What's the deal with floating the river? All right, aroma. Let's start with aroma. Wow, that's got a pretty hoppy aroma. For what? For a brown ale, especially. I mean, I understand this is a hoppy brown ale, but. Um, you know, you have kind of a natural thought of what a brown ale is going to smell yeah, like. Most brown ales, you're not going to get a lot of hop on that. No, this has way more hop than than any normal brown ale, and again, it should. But I will say, for something that included a hop hash, supposedly a ton of hop hash, right? It's not as hoppy smelling as I would have expected. No, it's not. It's not overwhelming, but it's definitely there, and that's really the only thing I get out of it. Do you get any other notes? 
Uh, yeah, there's some cereal malty qualities there in the background. A little, it, to me, it's not that strong. With you, definitely get hops, but not as much hop as I would expect. A lot of bitterness smell, but yeah. I, I get more the cereal uh, faint, man. To me, it's pretty heavy to me. I, I get like a very British quality to the nose. British or British? Yeah, uh, British, British. Oh, okay. Brit- British bread. Fair enough. Which is, you know, among the worst bread because it's just true. It's just plain British. Just plain, yeah. British food is among the worst food, so it fits. Unless you're talking fish and chips, which is which is a superior British food. That's the only good British food. Shepherd's pie is up there. It's all right. Shepherd's pie is a contender. For if you're talking top British food, it's well top British (laughs) food. I'm saying food in general, fish and chips, and well, yeah, maybe that, yeah. Fish and chips might be in top twenty-five. Sure, for a consumable. But that's not in this beer. There's no fish or chip smell. Appearance, pretty dark little beer. A little bit red on the top. We don't have any lights on this time, but uh, which uh, is dumb on our see, parts. But you can see through it if you hold it up to the window. At the bottom of the glass is very reddish brown, a little lighter. Uh, if you hold it up between all the bank of uh, monitors there, yeah, it's the window. You can see through it. Seems to be unfiltered, but that c- it's hard to tell on this uh, monitor light. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold it up to the actual window. You can see out there. Well, no, it appears to be unfiltered. Yeah. It's at least hazy in my glass. It does appear to be unfiltered. Um, uh, can't can't verify that for sure. Nobody can ever know. Maybe at some point we'll actually get some lights in here that work. It's just the one dim light finally burn out and there's nothing in here with now. With the heat so. in the state, it's right. better just to leave the lights off as much as you can. Just reduce all heat sources as much as well, you plus, can. Plus, in addition to not walking, Mark likes to stay in the darkest areas possible. True. I like a nice He's cave. kind of a cave person, basically. Yes. Just call me Batman, except I can't... <laughs> Actually without anything. any of the skills? Yes, without <laughs> any of the skills. Or the ability to leave the cave. All I can do is stutter. <laughs> you can sit around and monitor several things, kind of like Batman does, but that's about it. I can be an average programmer, that's about <laughs> it. Now, uh, glass on the, the lacing itself. Uh, a lot of lacing in this Man, beer. the head's decent retention, too, or has Head. decent retention, too. Yeah, we're drinking these out of shakers, but uh, for that glass, there's a lot of lacing in this. Shaker's one of the recommended... Uh, this, uh, glass wears to drink it in. God, I can't talk today. It's like, uh, yeah. it's like I already had 10 of these. It is. Now, the most important thing is taste and mouthfeel. Nah. That's down on the list. Definitely bitter up front. Definitely reminds me of a an IPA in a lot of ways. Hence the India-style brown ale. Yeah, it, it's definitely bitter. Yeah, it's definitely bitter, but... It reminds me more of like... I need a couple of drinks of it. It's like a it's like a weird combo. It's it's like a weird mashup between how it's like um it's like an East Coast IPA mixed with a West Coast IPA in a way because it's got s- some of those little spicy notes. It's like a couple of Transformers, you know, from it's like a Decepticon mm-hmm. and an Autobot linked up together to make uh, a giant robot. I feel like the resiny part is very prominent. Yes, the resin is very high. Um. The chocolate and caramel are not very present uh, so far. Maybe a couple drinks in, they will be. Uh, but I definitely notice it's like... The, the dark chocolate is there, uh, but I don't get any like sweet caramel taste so far. But the resiny notes are really overpowering. Yeah, they are. Man, our tongues are actually in sync for once. Wonder Twin powers activate. Form wow. of wow. one lame white guy. That's crazy how resiny it is. It's really resiny. <laughs> That's more than I expected. I, I know that was listed as one of their descriptors, but still. It's more resiny than a lot of West Coast IPAs. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. That's what I'm saying. To me, it reminds me of, like, we talked about East Coast IPAs before. It's And uh, we talked a lot about West Coast. It's like oh, a yeah. weird combo between the two. It's like a, a weird amalgamation between the two. It is an amalgam. It is definitely an amalgam. It's like the... I don't know. Um, it's like a centaur or something. It's <laughs> it's got the ass of a horse and the head of a non-horse. Now I feel like it, when you drink it more, that the uh, the darker chocolate or the pale chocolate, as they describe it, I feel like that comes out. Which to me, the pale chocolate, I don't know if it's supposed to be the same, but it tastes like dark chocolate. Uh, it's definitely not sweet. Um, the resin the resiny stays there, but I feel like the dark chocolate starts to come out a little bit more. Um. The bitterness definitely recedes, but the resin remains. I don't feel like the citrus comes out much either. Um, I do. I think it's kind of mixed up in there with the resiny flavors. I think they kind of are little, a little bit intertwined there. They're holding hands, skipping down the trail, eating good trail mix. I feel like if you didn't know they were there, though, like if you have to think about it and you kind of notice it, it wouldn't be very prominent. Um, you know, I, I think the resiny and the dark chocolate, are, or the pale chocolate, are the two, the two main uh, tastes that you get out of it. 
Um, the caramel and the citrus hops are very subtle, if at all, uh, in my my personal palate's opinion. Yeah, it's it's really really uh, dominated by one flavor here, and that that's for sure. And it's definitely the resin, um, which I didn't expect. I <clears> didn't either. But then again, I didn't know what to expect out of a hoppy brown ale because I can't remember in, having had one in living memory. Now I will say the the edge of the resin does tone down the more you drink it, and I feel like it. I feel like it gets a little flatter and a little smoother. Um, so it's not so harsh, which is kind of nice. Um, and it, it kind of allows for those, I, I kind of get what you're talking about now with the citrus. It comes out a little bit more the more you drink it. Uh, man, I, I just don't, it's, it's a confusing, it's a confusing beer. It does, it does confuse the palate. <laughs> it's, uh, it's all twisted up. It's all tangled up. It's my tongue is in a tangle. Here's what one person, uh, put that I think is a, Pretty decent uh, description of it. It says a confused beer, not quite an IPA, definitely not a brown ale, bready flavor with average bitterness on the back end, not much else going on. I tried it on tap and it tastes flat to me. Bottle is a little better, but not much. <laughs> it's not horrible, but passable. Was there? That's was there a not a great compliment. No, I'm not. I, no, no, I'm not saying it's a compliment. I guess the beginning part. I don't know if I agree with their whole review, but the the fact that it's not quite an IPA and definitely not your normal brown ale that that's definitely true. And I feel like there's not a whole lot going on in this one. Uh, I will say that I think it's been a while since I've had this beer, but it does remind me of the six point resin in a lot of ways. This I think the six point resin, if I remember right, is stronger in that resiny flavor. It's very much yeah, it's but definitely stronger. It definitely reminds me of the six point resin for sure. I was trying to figure out what it was. See, I like the six point resin though. I do, and I, I'm not saying I don't like this beer, yeah. but I am. My tongue is so confused. Well, it's less confusing. The resin's less confusing because yeah. it's pure resin. Right? You know? There's not. There's not this dark, pale chocolate, uh, somewhat citrusy note to it. And so I, that, that, that's what makes it confusing. Yeah, and I think it's going to be hard to rate this beer because we don't have anything to compare it to other than IPAs or the Six Point Resin. Or much. Or brown ales. <laughs> even standard brown ales. So it's, it's a weird... It's it, like the man with two brains. Yeah, or, and I knew it would be. I mean, I knew it would be weird when we talked about it, but... Yeah, man... I know we're kind of being repetitive and kind of sitting here with a lot of dead air, but to be honest, it's it's hard to make a whole lot of compl- or a whole lot of comments on it because there's not a whole lot of differences to comment on. It's it's so divided. Yes, it's so divided. So, and there's not a whole lot of subtle things to talk about in it. You know, it's yeah. not like you can say, "Well, it has hints of this, this, and this." It's it's mostly ah, here you go, here's your resin, your pale chocolate, right in the right in the right in the kisser, and that's yeah. pretty much it. You know, so. We have nothing else to say, <laughs> but... Well, let's not just sit around with that air. Yeah, we can just talk. We can just go to ratings. Ratings. Go for it, Mark. Well, if I had to give a name to this beer, I was originally going to go with Douglas Fir, but I'm going to name it The Thing with Two Heads, <laughs> named after the 1972 movie where a white man transplanted his head onto a black man's body, but he also had a second head, the black man's head. So they had a white man's head on a black man's body with the original man's head combating against each other in this... Very strange movie. Yes, it's that called, is very strange. It's the thing with two heads. And that's what this beer reminds me of. Because it is neither here nor there. It is neither West Coast IPA nor Brown Ale. It's a strange combination of the two. And it's hard for my tongue brain to wrap its tongue brain around itself. Around the taste. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like it, Your tongue on, brain can wrap your, it's, it around itself. If you just evaluate the Brown Ale, it's an okay Brown Ale. If you just evaluate it on, let's just say, just on the basis of an IPA, given it's an India-style beer, it's a very resiny IPA. I'm not sure that I would like it all the time. It might be okay. I don't know that I'm as much of a fan of resin as some people are, apparently. So it's a very, it's a strange, strange beer to you know to try to evaluate, and I don't have anything else to compare it to. Yeah. I enjoyed the aroma because it was very subtle hops with a decent cereal-esque quality up front. Uh you know, Snap, Crackle, and Pop were clearly working hard on this beer. Um, appearance-wise, it's fine. It's <laughs> nothing right. It has about. an appearance. has an appearance. It definitely fits into the category of brown ale. Taste being the most important factor. I Maybe one of these once in a while might enter my mouth, but it's not something I'm going to reach for all the time. Now, does it live up to its description of being resiny and hoppy? Yes, it does. The But... I don't. I don't feel like it's a very. God, it's it's not. I can't even say it's balanced. I don't. I don't want to say it's a bad thing because it's such a weird style of beer. <laughs> so I really just have to narrow it down to how do I enjoy this beer all around. 
And for that, like I said, I don't know that I would buy this very often. If it was around, I might drink one, but it's not ever going to be a go-to beer. <laughs> I'm probably not going to purchase it deliberately. You're not going to fill the beer fridge with it? No. Um... Because to me, it's neither here nor there, and I don't know that my tongue personally enjoys this flavor combination. It probably works from other people. It just doesn't work for me. I, I appreciate the effort. I give you an A for effort for sure, because I appreciate the experimentation, but I can't give it any more than 2.75 out of 5. Yeah, I, I like your name. The man with two heads for this beer. The uh, thing with two heads. So. Or the, whatever, the thing with two heads. Uh, I would probably name it Tis Confusion because it's very confusing. It is a, it's an IPA. It's a brown ale. Um, or either one of those by themselves, that great. I'm going to say meh for both of them. They're, they're both okay. I feel like it's kind of a plain resiny IPA mixed with kind of a plain dark chocolatey brown ale that doesn't have anything special. So, I mean, they're mixing, to me, two so-so beers together and making a concoction and a bit out of it. Um, I agree with you that I definitely appreciate the effort because it's cool that people try to experiment. And sometimes those experiments turn out awesome. Sometimes they turn out meh. You Just know? think of all your sexual experimentation. Sometimes it works out wonderfully. Exactly. Sometimes Some things you don't want to do again. Some, most of the times it doesn't. Most of the time you right. want to run in horror. Of the a lot of you times just, you don't want to do that again. Right. You do it once and you're done. You wake up the next morning, you reflect upon the, the, the sexual crimes you've committed. Not sexual crimes. That sounds bad. <laughs> the, I'm distancing from that. But. <laughs> uh, okay, the horrors of memory that you've right. just committed as you wake up from an ecstasy-fueled haze. <laughs> and you wonder, why did I do that? It right. seems so great at the time. Uh, exactly. And I, I think that's probably what Sweetwater's doing here. Um, <sighs> but to be distributing it, a lot of people must like this thing to be distributing it this far and wide in a 12 pack. It has a really high rating. It does. Um, Maybe beer, we're in the wrong. Advocate. Maybe we're and, in the minority. Right. Um, as far as their description's concerned, I don't think they hit most of what they say. They hit two points really hard. Resiny, pale chocolate. They hit both of those. Mm-hmm. To me, really weak on caramel, really weak on citrusy notes. Um... I don't know if it's the hop hash or what it is, but the I just feel like the IPA portion is maybe overly resiny. I I would say it might be more resiny than the than the six point resin, to be honest with you, because um, I had one of those not in the not too long ago, and I I feel like this one like just sat there and coated the mouth with resin. So, to me, even the two beers separately, from what I can tell, obviously it's hard to know when they're mixed, but from what I can tell, wouldn't be rated that highly. And putting them together doesn't rate it that much more or that much better. So for me, this is probably a beer I would never get again. That's not an insult to Sweetwater across the board because I know I've had some things I liked. This particular experiment, just not for me. Even though I like IPAs and brown ales, they're both in my wheelhouse of things I like a lot. I'm going to have to say this one gets a 2.50 out of me. Give us a final score of... Well, thanks for listening to the show. If this is your first time subscriber listening to the show or or, uh, subscribing after the Michael Pettacall's podcast, thanks for coming to the show. Thanks, everybody, for listening to the show in the past. Thanks to everybody who subscribed to the show. We really appreciate it. Thanks for all your comments, your emails, your warm wishes, even your hate sometimes as we sometimes get. We'll take hate. That's fine. We that's, appreciate that's it. That's interaction. That's good. Uh, if you want to subscribe to the show and you're not already, just go to brewbloods.net. There's links there to, that will tell you how to subscribe to the show. There's an entire guide I wrote to tell you how to subscribe to a podcast if you don't Is it a really PDF I can how. download? It's a PDF. It's a, no, Sweet. it's actually a giant JPEG. It's a, a PowerPoint? Thir- it's a 34 meg download. I also have a Clippy presentation. <laughs> you need to break it out to a 15-page PowerPoint. <laughs> Uh, with like little inter- interactions and everything that show the mouse clicking on the link and everything. Thanks to Stefan for helping with the education segment this week. Uh, if you oh, enjoy a more vulgar podcast, listen to our other show called The Break Room at breakroom.tv. It's more scatological, definitely more adult than this show, and definitely not about beer. It's more about snacks and pop culture in general. Did Stefan ever give us the review of KBS? I can't remember. Uh, let's move on. Uh, leave us a review on iTunes. It would help us. Uh, leave us a nice five-star review and rating. We'd really, really appreciate it. 
Check us out on social networks, uh, Tumblr, Instagram, I'm Facebook, and Twitter. Never going to move on by that. On all of those. you got to stop his paycheck until he does that. If you have any feedback on the episode, you can go to our subreddit, reddit.com slash r slash brewbloods. You can email us at brewbloodsshow at gmail.com, or you can call us, as many people have, or haven't, 469-573-BEER. That's 469-573-2337. Some people have. A few people have. Yeah. We'll catch you guys next week for episode 67 of Brewbloods. Probst. Probst. Oh, wait, for Dustin and Mark. Yeah, Probst. For Mark, I'm Dustin. Probst. Probst. <laughs>